could read could read Latin. But what about the poor person who couldn't read the Bible? What about the person who couldn't read at all? Well, the Bible was read to him. So first of all, at Mass on Sunday, the Bible would have been read out in Latin, and that was a language that people very often could understand. And usually when it was read out in Latin, then it would be discoursed on or even reread in the local language. And the details are voluminous in terms of the availability of the Bible in the times prior to the Protestant Reformation. So I just want you to be aware of that. There's so much research, so much historical documentation. It's not even up to grabs. It's not even disputed by serious people who have actually considered the evidence. And that is that sometimes people say, yeah, but the Catholic Church changed the Bible. It changed the Bible up. Well, that's actually true. In the Middle Ages, when the monks spent their entire lives hand copying manuscripts of the Bible so that future generations like ours would have Bibles available. Keep in mind, first of all, those were Catholic monks. There were no Protestants in the Middle Ages. There were no Calvinists or Baptists or Lutherans or any of the other groups. There were only Catholics. Now, there were other heresies, to be sure, but the church that safeguarded the Holy Bible through those many centuries was the Catholic Church. And it was those Catholic monks, those Catholic monks for the most part, who spent the better part of their lives translating these manuscripts, and not just translating, but also hand copying them. So was the Bible chained? And the answer is yes. It was chained. And it was chained in churches. So you could go into some of these medieval monasteries or these medieval cathedrals and you could see and you'll still see today paintings and woodcuts and things that depict the bible chained why was it chained it was chained for the same reason as someone once said that the telephone company used to chain telephone books in telephone booths if you're old enough to remember telephone booths a thing of the past it's an antiquity now it's a curiosity from a bygone era but if you can remember <laughs> long enough ago when we actually had telephone booths, what did you find chained in the telephone booth? You found a telephone book. And it was chained not because Ma Bell didn't want you to read it, but because Ma Bell recognized that people, if it weren't chained there, if it were just sitting there, it would disappear pretty quickly and you wouldn't have a telephone book to look through the white pages or the yellow pages in. So they chained the phone books in the phone booths so that they would be there for people to use. And it's the same reason that Bibles were chained in Catholic churches, so that they wouldn't be stolen. He recognized, hey, this is sweet. I can get a lot of money for this. The gold and silver illumination and the, the beautiful drawings, and, and for that matter, just the art of calligraphy and the ability to, to uh, hand copy a manuscript like that was worth a very handsome amount of money. So they were chained, not so people couldn't use them, but so that people would be able to use them and they wouldn't be stolen. Those are some tidbits from history. I thought you might find that interesting. We're going to go back to the phones right after this quick break. The number is 888-914-9149. 888-914-9149. Call now. I'll be right back. By you. This is listener supported Relevant Radio. Relevant Radio is now reaching far more people for Christ nationwide. We're heard from Maui to Maine. And you can help bring Christ and the Catholic Church to others by making a donation. Your gift is tax deductible, it's allowed by law, and you can donate by calling 877 291 0123. 877 291 0123. Or use that app or go online at relevantradio.com. Hello, I'm Father James Kavicki, and today is the anniversary of our Blessed Mother's last appearance at Fatima, Portugal, in the year 1917. She had predicted that on this day a great miracle would be seen, and so it was. Here's what happened according to a book by John Hafford entitled, Meet the Witnesses of the Miracle of the Sun. A light of extraordinary power was seen over a radius of more than 20 miles, like fireworks sending off great shafts of colored light which tinted objects on the ground. It plummeted toward the earth after several minutes, looking so near that tens of thousands of witnesses thought it was the end of the world. The great ball of fire stopped just as it was about to crash upon the earth 
and it returned into the sky. It came from and went back to the location of the sun, so that those who saw it actually thought it was the sun. The place where this occurred, which had been drenched by several hours of constant rain, suddenly dried within a matter of minutes. Tens of thousands of people of all classes and of various religions, and even atheists, in an area of about 600 square miles, witnessed the event. Father Kubicki here again. I'm always amazed that so few people know about this event that was reported on the front page of the Portuguese newspapers of the time. And I hope that knowing more about it will lead people to respond to our Blessed Mother's request that we pray the rosary every day. Listen to more of Father James Kubicki's daily reflections by downloading the free Relevant Radio app. I wanted to thank you first off, and thanks to Relative Radio for helping me return to my faith and helping me deepen in my faith, which has just been an incredible journey. Bringing Christ to the world through the media. Relevant Radio. You hear Father Rossi talk about the well-formed conscience. He's got this great online ebook, Vote Your Conscience, that you can download at relevantradio.com slash vote. It's easy to read. It's absolutely free. It's a great book for adults. But hidden in it are little, like, treasures, little gems about also teaching our kids to form that conscience from a very early age. And that's how Morning Star Gracious. The Morning Star, Bella Matutina in Latin, heralds the coming of the rising sun. But the Morning Star is not actually a star. It's a planet Venus. Yet it's brighter than any star in the sky. Likewise, the Blessed Mother heralds the coming of the Savior Jesus Christ, arriving on the scene of history, just before Jesus. Just as the Morning Star, planet, is brighter than any star in the sky. Our Blessed Mother, human being, shines more brightly in heaven than all of the sense in angels. The morning star is a beautiful thing to behold, and it's a chance to make you wonder how God can create something so beautiful. Perhaps in heaven, when we see the morning star, we will understand. Recently, then with the distinct note, throughout history, God has never ceased to use her as the light through which he leads us himself. The morning star, praise in the church of Sunday nation.